Now I'd like to introduce you to the smallest bird in the world, the hummingbird. Some of these little guys are tiny, only two inches long if you measured them from beak to tail. But don't let the hummingbird's small size fool you. These little birds have some really big talents. They can really fly. Just look at them in your backyard and you'll see what I mean. Oh, there's one. The things about hummingbirds that are in all hummingbirds, they can fly frontwards, backwards, they can fly sideways, they can go up, they can go down, they can hover. They're the only bird that can do all that. Uh, their wings are hooked on differently than other birds. They go up to something like 200 beats a second at times. And uh, it, they're kind of like the dragonfly that we talked about on, on volume two. That it can fly in every which direction too. So we have an insect that can fly in every direction. Now we have a bird that can fly in any kind of a direction. And a hummingbird isn't like other birds. Uh, most birds, when they take off, they have to shove off with their feet. A hummingbird, it can s wake up from its torpor condition overnight, and then all of a sudden, it decides time to take off with one flap of the wings. It doesn't even have to. It's so powerful. Just one flap of the wings, and it is almost full speed ahead. And they can fly really rapidly. Uh, matter of fact, uh, during the mating season, when the male is trying to impress the female, uh, he will start buzzing his wings. This is when they're going maybe 200. The, the wings will be uh, beating at many, many RPMs, and it makes the, the hum sound. The, the, they got their name, Hummingbird. And that's when he is trying to impress a female. His wings are... I don't, I, that, that's not the exact sound, but they, they make that sound. The hummingbird gets its name from that sound. Some hummingbirds, uh, their beak is made for a particular flower. So their beak has a particular shape to it, a particular curve or a certain length, so that it can reach in to a certain kind of flower. One hummingbird has a, a, a beak four inches long. And the tongue in a hummingbird is almost like a tube. And so it, it, has, a, it has a pump, and it'll pump that, that nectar up out of the flower. The hummingbird, are, they're some of the most colorful birds that we have. And uh, their color, though, doesn't come from pigment. Uh, God has made the hummingbird with uh, uh, like a, a scaly-type formation of its feathers, so that the light is refracted and reflected through that and out comes all these colors. So maybe at night you would look at a hummingbird and it would kind of be just drab. But that you get the daylight and the light shining on it and all these brilliant colors come out. Another thing about them at night, their little metabolism is just going a mile a minute here all day long and they have to eat almost constantly all day long because they burn so much energy. But then at night when they go to sleep, if they didn't go into this condition that's called torpor, which slows their metabolism down, slows their heart rate way down, uh, slows their body temperature, uh, cools down their body temperature so that they're only a couple degrees above outside temperature, whatever it is, and then they sleep that way. Well, then they're not burning a lot of energy at night because most flowers close up at night and, and, and they just don't go looking for flowers at night anyway. But if they didn't have this particular uh, uh, way of protecting themselves at night, they would, they, would, they would like starve to death overnight because of this rapid metabolism. And yet, hummingbirds migrate. And many times they'll migrate with the flowers. As the flowers are blooming and, and they're going farther north each year, the hummingbirds go right with the flowers. Some f hummingbirds will go and fly all the way across the Gulf of Mexico. Well, that's like 500 miles. You have a little two or three inch long bird that normally is eating all day, every day, and now all of a sudden it takes off and it's gonna fly 500 miles and it can't rest, it can't, it can't land, it's gonna fly that whole distance. Well, how does it do that? Well, I haven't been able to find any researchers that really know how it does that. There's different theories about that. I think this is another area we could use some young people to, let's figure this out. How does it? something that burns energy rapidly, then with still using a lot of energy, conserve energy as it's flying across the Gulf of Mexico. And so there's, 
some mysteries here built into the hummingbird, too, that I think deserve some of us to take a look at. Of course, a hummingbird is so tiny that they make a tiny nest, and they can make a nest in a matter of hours. And sometimes they do. Uh, but usually they'll work on it a day or two, and, and they make the nest. And sometimes the nest is its only about the size of a quarter, a 25-cent piece. The eggs, about the size of a small pea. It only lays two eggs, so it'll have those two little eggs. But it's interesting how they get the material to make their nests. Uh, they'll use little bits of grass and, and, and sometimes some twigs and things. How do they hold it all together? They go and get spider webbing. And then different kinds of hummingbirds will make different varieties of nests. And of course, if you know hummingbirds and you see a nest, then you'll know, well, that's the hummingbird. But some of them, their nests are just hanging off of limbs, little twigs and things, and it's not balanced right. So they will go and they will pick up little pebbles, and with spider webbing, they'll hang pebbles on the side of the nest to balance the nest so that when the, when the bird is in the nest on the eggs, these stones uh, act as as a balance so that the nest hangs more, uh, straighter as well as it's, it doesn't rock as much in the wind because of the weight of the pebbles hanging on it. Well, how, would a, how, could, how big could the brain of a hummingbird be? You know, this little tiny creature. And it has the knowledge to build a nest, first of all. It has its own kind of nest that it's going to build. And then it knows how to balance a nest by certain weights that it hooks in in there that that seems like a design feature that would require information put in there so that it knows what to do and I, and I believe our creator is the one that does that